everything you need to know about the Yoko Ono exhibition in London at Tate Modern. Music of the mind. What to expect and what to prepare. And by prepare, I mean, yes, it's a very interactive exhibition. You're going to have your chance to create your own input and then also see other people's inputs. And I find this incredibly important and great and moving, actually. First of all, how can you get there? Tate Modern is next to Millennium Bridge and Shakespeare's Globe. The closest underground station is Blackfriars. The exhibition is at Blavatnik building and you can get there from any entrance so whether it's from front back side just follow the signs okay i went on saturday 12 p.m and i was kind of wondering like how busy it's going to be i didn't want it to be super busy because i wanted to enjoy it obviously so i didn't want to go earlier but even surprisingly at 12 um, the place was not super crowded so obviously there were some people but it was not overcrowded at all so it's actually a perfect time if you want to have your time in terms of really enjoy it very quietly just go right when they open whether it's nine or ten i'm not sure and or you can go during the week which i would assume it's a little bit less busy if you don't want to fly through the exhibition, I mean, it costs 22 pounds, so you better enjoy it as much as you can. Basically, it took me one and a half an hour. My pace was kind of like probably medium, sometimes small. It depends. Some of the artworks, you spend more time on them. I haven't watched all the films fully, so some of the films are much longer. I didn't truly, fully go for the audio and video. Obviously, the films I watched, but... Um, I would say if you want to literally try and really experience every single element, you're going to need two and a half hours. For me, one and a half an hour was completely exactly what I needed. Oh, but of course, if you go with someone, what you can do, you can take a lot of pictures, which will take you more time, but you can also play chess. So, oh yeah, like it can take you four hours, to be honest. There's plenty of opportunity to buy merchandise okay so like books posters postcards t-shirts anything like that on ev in every single corner the book obviously i was thinking about it but the book was 32 pounds so i was like okay i paid 22 now this is 32 i'm pretty sure it it was just so interesting but it wasn't really for me this time uh, postcards are one pound and posters were 10 pounds so probably the book was the most expensive item um, in the shop. Okay, so the beginning of the exhibition is just... It's already, like, gets you, right? You walk in and there's artificial tree. And you see the tags, you know, paper tags with writing on it. Like, hundreds of them. And there are two of those trees for now. And you can read other people's wishes. You can see, like, what others uh, they want, their deepest desires. And it's strangers, you know, but, like, you feel... Like, it's part of you. It's basically like we are all the same, but we are in different stages of life. A lot of times, I, it kind of made me, made me laugh. So one of them was like, I hope she texts me back. <laughs> Teenager, I would assume. The point of the exhibition is the exact opposite of many people's goals. <laughs> and maybe they got it in the end. Like, maybe this helped them to understand. Because I have seen a lot of wishes, which were basically like... I want to become famous designer. I want to be rich. I want to have money. Like, I want to have the house. Like, it was very materialistic and around money, right? Which the whole concept of the exhibition and Yoko Ono as, as an entity and brand is quite the opposite of that. So maybe some people came out of it as better people, you know? I don't know. It just made me, definitely made me laugh. You finally enter the exhibition. And what you see is kind of like the intro writing. And the sentence that stood out for me there, the only sound that exists to me is the sound of the mind. Yoko wants us to imagine. She wants you to imagine when you go and enter the exhibition. And she kind of helps you, inspires you, but she doesn't tell you what to think. She doesn't tell you what to do. It all is kind of like... It just comes out naturally. So every single person coming out of that exhibition took away something different. It's exactly like the music, like a song. A song means something else for, for a different person. So then you go into another room and 
it's just kind of like a reminder of Yoko, you know, being born in Japan. And she was born in 1933, so she remembers the Second World War, the USA bombed Tokyo, and what helped her survive was knowing that the, the stars are up there and they will always be, and also like her imagination. So this is where pretty much it all started. And as a, as a war fanatic, I went and spent most of the time on pieces where Obviously, it's very current also these days, um, the whole war and peace and all that. So you can see a lot of messages which are pretty current. And even though it's a it's a window back to the past, right, where you feel like you'll be teleported back to the 60s, it's so relevant that, yeah, like more than ever, actually, because we have like two major wars going on right now, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I stopped at the Nazi helmets. Nazi soldiers helmets kind of like the metaphor like she mentions the stars in the sky and the helmets were positioned as stars also what struck me was the glass which was penetrated by a bullet so you could see the cracks and you could see through those cracks for John Lennon fans of course we have pictures of John Lennon together with their um, list of marriage like how we call it like um and uh, pictures of them completely naked. They're also a short film. So you walk through, right? And I always heard some kind of like hitting the nail, like a hammer sound, um, all like nonstop. And I was like, why would you do this at the exhibition? Like, or like, why would you have the construction going on? And I didn't even, I didn't even realize that. I remember like Yoko for the posters and billboards, she's holding a hammer. And there is an artwork where people can, could hit the nail into the wall and just like, it's just like hundreds of nails like sticking out of the wall. And that's the, that's another interactive part where you can, you know, do your thing and release whatever you have inside of you by hitting a nail. So um, yeah, that was, that was quite cool. I was just like, oh, this is what it is. Oh my God. Also the section where I stopped a lot was um, her grape grapefruit sessions so it's like um, a book and kind of like thoughts and it really like a lot of them just made me stop and really think about it so some of them I remember one which was select an amount of dollar write it on a piece of paper imagine all the things you can buy with that amount and all the things that you cannot buy with that amount pretty cliche but obviously very true and there was one that I don't remember exactly, but it was um, something like find a piece of rock that is as big as you, shred it to the dust, right? And send pieces of it to your friends without telling them what it is and why you're doing this. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not going to even explain this to you, so think about it. Or walk all over the city with an empty baby carriage. <laughs> It's just so much more than an, an exhibition. I felt fully present, but taken in the past as well. So, and I was pretty moved and emotional and I felt really good in the end. So there is also a big room, which was originally pure like white walls and like a ship in, in, in the middle. Now it's full of paintings and words and like just people's inputs. So you can literally read somebody's you know thoughts and it's not censored like you can do whatever you want you can write whatever you want you can draw whatever you want and it's just so many inputs that it doesn't stand out right but it as united as human beings it's it has an impact it's one of those things as well which are like yeah this is amazing you know the last bit of the exhibition was again a lot of input from people and that was probably the strongest i mean i had a tear in my eye at the end, it was it was just so beautiful. It just confirmed the whole exhibition was about the unity of people and love and peace, whether it's inside and outside, of course, as well. And no matter what you think of Yoko, like she nailed it, right? So the last bit was absolutely beautiful. It was write a message to your mom and you could see hundreds, if not thousands of messages from strangers and some of them attached pictures as well. So you could see the face behind the message. And obviously it was heartbreaking because sometimes you write to your mom, but she's no, lo she's no longer with you. But sometimes it was just like full of love and, f and humor and like 
everybody has different perspective, right? So it just felt really, really strong and emotional. And this was like the last thing. So then you walked out, exited, you know, and you had this like love inside of you, which was essentially the whole point. So overall, I have to say I am incredibly happy that I did go and I would recommend for you to go. If you have been, let me know in the comments what you thought of that, which was which part was your favorite. And if you have not been, but you have any questions, just comment below and I'm going to go and answer all of those. But yeah, if you've been, just let me know how you liked it or disliked it. I don't know, but I cannot imagine that you would dislike it, to be honest. So, you know, unless you're lying. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe so you don't miss any future adventures of mine. And yeah, see you next time.